Bitcoin mining isn't any different from many other activities in the economy in that it benefits from scale. If you can raise more capital to buy more advanced equipment and build more efficient infrastructure with better internal climate control, physical security, perhaps even continuously relocate to the most crypto-friendly jurisdictions with the lowest energy rates and taxes, or leverage some other competitive advantages, you will grow faster than your competitors. And since the difficulty level required to mine each new block will increase as the hash rate increases, the barrier to entry for new competitors will continuously increase and mining becomes an arms race to scale first and fastest. The one who scales best will be the most profitable and perhaps eventually the only profitable miner capable of surviving at greater and greater levels of mining difficulty, which could have the effect eventually of putting everyone else out of business and centralizing control of the network. In light of these forces and incentives, all the huffing and puffing about decentralization really should to some extent be taken with a grain of salt. Many things can look good in a white paper, but not play out the way you expect in practice. The test of any theory is whether it can be applied in real life. And in the case of Bitcoin, we now have our answer. Power has been centralizing for years, but we recently crossed a brave new world threshold of sorts. Just two mining pools have now exceeded the vaunted 50% hashing power needed to control the entire network. And control means exactly what you think it means. Just two companies could arbitrarily dictate the future direction of Bitcoin development, which patches to accept and which to reject, maybe write their own patches to do things like update Bitcoin Core to increase or eliminate the infamous 21 million hard supply cap, or include some of Satoshi's lost coins as rewards for mining new blocks with each future halving event. With 51%, these two companies can arbitrarily dictate which entire blocks of transactions to accept or reject, even if they were mined by someone else. That is not a commonly understood fact. Yes, they are only mining 51% of the blocks, but with 51% of all hashing power in the entire world, they could mine new blocks privately, faster than everyone else in the world combined could mine publicly. And in any scenario where truth is in dispute between two versions of the chain, the one with the most blocks wins, so they can do whatever they want privately, then later force everyone else to accept it and impose a new truth. With that strategy, they could control 100% of the blocks with just 51% of the hashing power. Just two companies could issue refunds and reverse transactions, double spend at their leisure, pick and choose which transactions to commit to new blocks in whatever order they want for whatever reason they want, create tiers of service by providing preferential treatment to certain wallets, or conversely, blacklist and sanction wallets. They could quite easily become the point of control for implementation of government regulations. There is a misconception that a 51% attack would not allow someone to steal your Bitcoin, but that's not true. If someone can change the code, they can do anything they want. It's just code, not physics. They would really only be limited by how far back into the chain they can reach to make changes, because remining each block until it is longer than the public chain will be expensive. But this isn't something theoretical that has never happened before. 51% attacks are actually quite common in the crypto world. Just not with Bitcoin, because the hash rate required has always been so enormous. But Bitcoin SV, for example, has suffered many such attacks in just the last year. Now, everyone else isn't completely helpless. But if the other miners decide they aren't happy with the attacker's behavior, their only recourse is to fork Bitcoin and create a separate blockchain. Which is also quite common, just not as a result of a 51% attack. Bitcoin SV, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold are all forks of Bitcoin that have slightly different properties than the most widely used branch of Bitcoin, which everyone simply calls Bitcoin out of convention. Now, to be 100% clear, there is no indication any of these things will happen, and they almost certainly won't, because it would be incredibly stupid for these two companies to kill the magic goose that lays their golden eggs. Destroying the reputation of Bitcoin would also destroy their businesses. The more likely scenario, if they decide to exercise their power at all, would be to avoid anything too controversial or splashy. They would prefer most people not even know anything happened. They would be quiet and subtle or couch their plans in altruistic propaganda and complicated technobabble you won't understand. Ethereum Classic split from Ethereum after most miners colluded to roll back a bunch of transactions after the infamous DAO hack. Remember, code is only law when you get hacked.
But what if they were going bankrupt anyway and had nothing left to lose? Could they perhaps choose to go out with a bang? Probably not. But the point is, they could. The point is, you have to trust they won't. Not trust in math, but trust in people. Trust, permission, censorship. These are all concepts Bitcoin maxis are allergic to, and Bitcoin was supposed to make obsolete and impossible using math. But now we found out didn't. And everyone is right back to where we started, having to trust that people will choose not to abuse their power out of convention, principle, goodwill, self-preservation, or self-interest, just like a government or central bank. Trust. In the meantime, all they can do is watch and hope. If you found this content helpful, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. It really does help get this channel more exposure and keep me motivated to produce more content.